Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Valerie Wallace from Valerie Wallace Fine Arts, and I'm here in my basement studio in Orono, Maine, 04473. And tonight we are going to do a painting of this red barn in the snow. This painting overall is not very colorful. So the, the red barn is really important to, because it is the one thing that puts color in here. Um, We're gonna put down a little light color that's gonna go under the sky. It's gonna be a little gray. And then the snow is gonna be a little bit of light blue. And then we're gonna put white on top of that later. Okay. You wanna get your paint out. It's, I don't know how big you're working, but um, it's a lot of white. Probably you need two big globs of white, but I put a third one in there just in case. All right. A little bit of red. You're not going to need a lot, depending on you know what kind of red you have. If you have a lighter blue, I would use the lightest blue that you have. This is kind of dark, just because it's going to be, we're going to make a very, very light blue. So the lighter blue you have to start with, the better. Okay. And then I have a little brown. And, and all, all of these colors you don't really need much of. There's a lot of white. And then this is black down here. Okay. And we'll use the black at the end to put in those trees and stuff. We don't do that until the end. We don't want to get black on our picture and have it mix in with all of our colors. So we'll just be, we're going to lay everything down and then we're going to put in the trees and we're going to put in the, the fence at the end. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this snowbank here. Okay. We're going to make it very, very light blue. Partly because if I paint it white, you're not going to be able to see that I painted it anyway. So what you're going to do, I have a nice big brush. I'm going to go to where I have a blue. I'm going to put just a little bit, just a little tiny bit on there. And I'm going to go to one of my whites and I'm going to pat that in there. The lighter, the better. That's kind of what the third white is for. So if you put too much in and you have a, you know, something darker than this, wipe your brush off and just take a little bit of what you have here and put it in your, put it in the other white. And that way you should be all set. But anyway, that's what I've got going. We're going to go a line about right here. About here, it kind of dips down, but don't dip too much. So that's about, you know, it's about a third of your picture. So if you go to halfway, you find the middle of your paper, just go down a little bit and just paint a line across. All right, maybe this far and then dip it a little tiny bit and just go across. And then you're just gonna fill this in. Because when we paint, we like to have two coats of paint on our painting. All right. I guess it's not snowing yet, but I was thinking it's a good thing. It's a good thing we didn't have to meet because it probably would have had to rethink it. I know it's gonna snow a lot. All right. When you can, when you're doing the ground, you go side to side. If you can't, that's fine too. All right. Nice big brush, just throw that paint on there. A little bit of water sometimes helps like dip your brush in a little bit in the water and then get the paint. And that little bit of water will help spread around, okay? When you're done with this brush, put it in the water for a minute, get a smaller one. It doesn't have to be tiny, but something smaller. I've got, a, I've got one of my good ones that I buy and that's why it still has a price tag on it, but okay. We're gonna put it, we're gonna draw our little, our little barn in there, okay? The barn has two sides. Normally, I do a little bit of making it a little more in perspective, but I'm not gonna do too much with that. This line right here is, is horizontal. It's pretty much where our eye level is, our horizon line in this picture is about here. Like we're a little bit on a hill looking at this. Um, we're gonna start with a line right here, okay? Little brush, maybe a little water, and just a little tiny, tiny bit of blue, okay? Just a little tiny bit, okay? We're gonna start with this line right here. Don't make it too small, but everybody's gonna have a different size barn. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that's gonna come up is probably when you put your fence in, that's when you have to make your fence appropriate to the size of the barn you have. The trees can, the trees can be any size. This is a little bit 
here, a little bit to the left of where it slopes down. So I'm going to put a line like right here. Okay. Black. This is blue. Okay. I'm going to put another one over here for this part of the barn. It's pretty long, right? It's not a square on this side. It's a rectangle. So that it should be over a little ways. And this line can't be taller than this one. That's the only thing that matters. So it has to be the same length or shorter, right? Don't make it tall. I mean, if you do, it's not the end of the world, but that's the goal, okay? So I'm gonna put it like that. And then I'm gonna go across. Then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do the line for this part of the barn. This side is more, you know, is shorter than this one. So we're gonna go about the half the distance that you have here. And again, the, the line that you make here shouldn't start higher, it should start even or lower from what you did over there. Okay. And then you're gonna make a little, um, not too high, like don't start up here, start relatively close to these lines here and you're gonna make a little triangle like that. This is the important part. If you know what parallel means, the line that's the, this side of the barn's roof needs to be parallel with the line in the front. This line and this line need to be parallel, okay? That means they're at the same angle. It's not like this. If you do it like that and you, by accident, you just paint over it later. The other thing is, is that the length of this line I'm gonna put in here shouldn't be taller than this one. It needs to be the same length as this, if not smaller. So. If that's confusing, I mean, maybe the easier way to do it is that you're gonna draw a line from the peak of this roof over like this, but not all the way. You can do it either way. And then this line right here should be parallel. So, you know, you can just kind of check them. We're gonna put a door on the front here. And this should be pretty big, right? Cause this is like, you know, where you're gonna drive your big tractors in and all that kind of stuff. So it's not like a person sized door, which would be down here. So I'm gonna put a line right about there, one right about there, go across, something like that, okay? And then over here, we have a rectangle window. I don't know where you throw the hay in or something, okay? So not too high, you don't want to way up there. You want it down near the bottom a little bit, right? Because we're thinking about how big people are. And if it's way high, then it's not something anybody could see out of unless, oh, I'm not filming that. Either. But I, now I know that the barn is red, but we're going to paint it blue, okay? This is our undercoat for our barn because it's kind of dark and it's kind of cool. So we're going to use blue on that. It doesn't have to be super thick or anything, but you're just gonna fill in, not the roof, and you can skip the window and the door, but just the other part, okay? Like I said, it doesn't have to be super thick or anything, or even if you miss a little bit, that's okay too. But it's gonna help us to get a, a red that is appropriate for the um, lighting that we have in our, our wintry, our wintry feel that we have. Can't even see. I think I'm getting a little black. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is the next thing we're going to do. All right, we're going to fill in. Oh, wait a minute. Take your brush, rinse off that blue paint. All right, and then if you have a cloth, you can wipe it a little bit, but get your brush cleaned. And we're going to put in, I don't know if you can see it, but right over here is kind of like a hill that's in the distance. So we're going to use a little of our light blue that we used here. We're going to put some on that too. So it's about halfway up the, you know, halfway up the wall over here. I'm gonna go a little higher, I think. I'm gonna put it about here. All right, and then you'll fill this part in. And what this will do is help to, well, it, 
helps us make so you can see what you're doing, but it also will give a little shading kind of to the way the snow looks. We're gonna do the whole sky, which is gonna include where these, these trees are that are in the far distance. I think you can see that they're kind of gray. So we're gonna make a very, very light gray. If you have gray, get it out, you can use it. Um, and if you don't have gray, we're gonna make some, which is what I don't have now, I don't have any. We're gonna fill the whole sky and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put white on top of it, okay? So you can use your big brush again. All right, I've got my big one and I have some of this light blue. You can see I have that light blue left from the snow. I'm gonna use that. If you don't have any enough left, you know, take some more white and add that in there because you're gonna need quite a bit to fill the whole sky in. And what I want you to do is to take, if this is blue, as long as it's blue, if it's not blue at all, then you might need to add a little bit of blue to it. I guess, let me see. All right, can you see that now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what I want you to do is to take just a tiny, tiny bit of brown. I got a little bit, little, I don't even think you can see it. And you're gonna put that in there. And the blue and the brown will make gray and the white will make it nice and light. All right. Um, if it gets, I'm gonna make it a little darker, but if it gets really dark, wipe your brush off and take a little bit of that gray and put it in a, little, a different spot of white. Don't just keep adding white to it because sometimes that you'll just never get it lighter. Just sort of start over. I'm gonna put a little more, a little, better to add a little bit at a time. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there, maybe a little bit more blue, partly so that you can see. And again, if you have gray and it's light, you're good. If you um, have a gray that's dark, you maybe wanna add a little white to it. Let me see how this is going. So you can't always tell what it looks like on your plate, but you can tell when you put it up here. Oh, it's too blue. Okay, I need a little more brown. All right. Mine looks, I don't know what to call that. Yeah, it looks a little greenish, but. All right. Now it looks really, now it looks really green. Okay. If you don't get it, perfect it's okay because part of painting is learning to mix your colors and it's kind of cool and if if you don't get the right color it's fine the thing you want is for it to be pretty light if it's not super light then what will happen when you put the white on the sky you may have to put two coats that's all it's not going to be a big deal otherwise than that's not going to affect your picture okay so we're going to Okay, we're gonna paint the sky in from the snow all the way up to the top. Mine is definitely a weird greenish color. Sorry, guys. All right. Did you get a good gray, Veronica? That's all right. You can't learn to do it if you don't try to do it. And everybody's blue is a little different. Everybody's brown is probably different. So you're never gonna get exactly the same color. That's just, that's just how it works. Yeah. 
luckily painting is not, you know, something you have to be exact about. When you're, when you're done with painting that part in, you can put your um, big brush in the water. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of black on our barn. So get the smallest brush that you have because you don't need a lot of paint, okay? Something small, all right? I have that great big thing of, I've got a little guy like this. If you don't have something that small, then it'll be fine. You're just gonna paint over it. Don't get a lot of paint. The idea is if you have a brush that's little is for you to get a little teeny tiny bit of paint. You don't wanna get this much paint on your little teeny tiny brush because that doesn't make any sense, all right? So a little tiny bit. And what happens is this one is, a, it makes, it's why it looks a little bit flat, but I want you to go right along the bottom. I, I don't know if you can see that very well, but you're gonna go right along the bottom of the roof, okay? Which again, might not show that much. I think I used a different blue than I did in my practice. A little bit there and then a little bit here. It can be, you know, if it's a little thick, it's just gonna be a shadow, so. Not too big a deal. We'll put a little black there and there. Okay, that kind of makes it look like there's a little bit of eaves with the with the roof. And then you're gonna paint in your door. Okay. And you can put a little stripe here where your windows are. And just, you know, blend it in pretty well so you don't leave any big chunks because you want it to dry. Because we're gonna put the red on it a little bit. Okay, when you're done with that, you wanna get your, your big brush again, but clean it off the best you can. Um, sometimes that means you need to have two, two cups of water handy, or you definitely could use your cloth, have an old cloth, an old towel. Let's see, you know, I have an old, old towel like this, wipe that off good. Cause we're gonna put the white on, all right? And we want it to be, you know, if it's a little gray, that's okay, but you're, you're, that's the goal. So I have a nice scoop of white left here. Okay, that's what we're gonna do right now. Um, we're gonna start down here on the foreground because that should be all nice and dry. And take, you know, a big scoop of your white and you're just gonna put that right over your blue, okay? If you don't put it everywhere, it will kind of look like, like I'll, I'll see if this will work for you. But say, you know, say I left a little section there like this, does that, oh, let's see there. It will start to look like a little path or a little shadow or whatever, but you can fill the whole thing in too. If you, and you can put a little bit out on this piece here, you know, maybe just kind of along the top of it, kind of like this and kind of blend down. If a little bit of your blue shows through, it's good, it's fine, okay? But if it's thicker in some places and thinner in other places, that's all right. If it has a little slope to it, your barn should be dry. So it shouldn't be a big deal if you, when you paint over the edge of that. But if you're gonna do something that has white on it and then you're gonna add a color, like in our case, we're gonna put that red on the barn. You really wanna do the white part first because if you put the white on second, it's gonna pick up a little bit of that wet red and you're gonna pink snow. And having blue snow or purple snow or maybe even brown snow is okay, but you probably don't want pink snow. Okay, so then it, this should be this should be covering up your blue pretty well. Um, if some of the blue shows through, that's fine. It's not a big deal. And if it shows through more than you like, give it a chance to dry a little bit and you can put a little bit more on there. Okay. Right here is where we want, well, I'm going to do that last because probably going to pick up a little black from the door, but this is where I'm going to put this over 
this a little bit because what's happening is there's a hill and then you go around the little hill and that's how you get into the barn it's kind of overlapping the next thing we'll do is let's go ahead and put our white in our sky okay this is important though because then we're going to put a little on the roof we'll do that afterwards is there's a little bit of gray that's left above the the white of our roof so we want to have our tree line go a little above this because otherwise you're going to have a white roof against a white sky and it's going to be kind of an optical illusion as to whether or not the, there's a roof on the barn okay so you can keep your big brush you take a little white and i know that i i hope this will show yeah so i know i want it to be up about here i can go all the way across and then I can bring it over this way. I can even bring it down. And this is this is the top. This is a line that's kind of representing the tops of the trees. In this painting, it's pretty much it's just pretty much straight. But it is a little jiggity jaggedy, which maybe we'll we'll do in a second. But we might just leave it. So it doesn't need to be a straight line. Like you could have this kind of like wiggle a little bit or or go up and down. You know, I could paint it a little bit like this so that it cuts into the gray in kind of an up, you know, like a jig jaggedy little way. Okay. And then I'm going to take that white again and I'm going to fill the whole sky in. Okay. And that's going to come out, you know, pretty white like this. All right. And if some of the gray shows through, or if you like the gray, um you have to put a little white on there you have to change it a little bit or else it won't look different than these trees here but you could still mix in more gray with it it doesn't have to be quite white in my picture i feel like this is really big from top to bottom so what i can do is take a little white and bring that ground up a little bit like this paint over the bottom of it a little see how that just becomes makes the trees a little bit smaller and it just makes the hill a little taller if your trees be if this gray becomes enormous because your barn is so big okay what you do is make the grunt make more ground so I just like i said like right here bring I this did. up I just it'll be a lot of background that's how large the gap is <laughs> no no like you can always bring this back the the field behind the barn up i mean you could have rolling hills out to where the trees go so you could have you know they could be shades of gray or they could just be white or whatever it's not going to matter and what, what's going to ultimately happen is you're going to have a lot of trees right now it looks you know like this all everything we're doing is really important but ultimately this is just the background this isn't really that important the tree you know the trees putting the red on the barn that's when all the stuff comes together okay so we're just setting it all up this is the the supporting roles does that make sense can you get can you fix it now so if you if you were busy and you didn't hear that if this section of gray just seems the bigger it is the closer it is to the barn the tinier it is the more there's a big field behind the barn and far far away is a little strip of trees it's just it's just proportions in how we see it but it, in this case it doesn't make any difference because we're you know we're not trying to put your big brush away because you don't need that anymore but but don't leave it on the table to dry up because it won't be good and get a smaller one and what you want to do is to put some white on your the roof of your barn okay and i was going to have us put the blue under there and i forgot so Okay, so you're going to put this on here like that. You know, it's going to be kind of hard because if you're probably using a white piece of paper or canvas and it's a little hard to see, but all right. And you've got a blue line on there from when we sketched it out. So you're going to try to cover that up with your white. If you can't cover it with your white, because it just, you might need more than one coat. The other thing is, is to take the gray 
and come from the other direction and cover it over with that if that, that would work. But it won't matter. It's not. It's not going to be a big deal. It could be just that the uh, that part of the snow slipped off the roof and the shingles underneath show and they're blue. Okay. And you're also going to put a little piece of white down this side of the triangle that's on the front. And again, if, if it's, um, you know, a big windy snowstorm, it, the line on the top might not be straight. It might be lumpy, right? Because when the snow comes, it, sometimes it falls all gently and smooth, and sometimes it blows all over the place. So if you have a big lump on the top, that's okay. If it hangs over the edges a little bit, that's okay too. We're getting the serious stuff now, okay? Keep, one, we're gonna put the red on the barn, okay? Red is notoriously see-through. So you have two things that, you have two options. One is you may find that you need to put two coats of red. It's probably by the time you put one on, you can probably go back and pad in a little bit more. The other thing is that white, will make your red just a little more opaque. So less see-through, less, less, so the blue won't show through as much. But you don't want much white because you're gonna wind up with a pink barn. But it won't be super pink because we have the blue underneath and so it's not gonna be like that. But I've got a little bit of white left on my brush from doing the roof. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe some of that off on my cloth. So it just looks a little tiny, tiny bit white. And I'm gonna go to my red and I'm just gonna blend that in there a little bit. If you have a maroon or something, I mean, you can put that on there too. Um, so that didn't change too much. So what I'm gonna do is take, especially because my, my gray that was for this part, is kind of green. I'm gonna take a little dab of that. Looks like this. Okay, so this is the gray that was used here. I'm gonna put a little of that with my red and that will just, it's going to make it just a little more. It didn't change the color very much. I think you can see it's really not much of a different color. It's just a little milky, okay? And I'm going to put that right on here. But I'm going to be, you know, like I said, I might need two coats. But it should make it more maroon than like fire engine red, which wouldn't make any sense in our situation. When you can, you probably try to do a little bit of brushing side to side, because that'll seem a little more like um, planks of wood, but if you don't, that's all right too. <laughs> Which is not in here, but it has that really. Yeah. <laughs> so, have you ever had the thought And if if your if your red comes out not super smooth and even, but like a little redder in some places and a little darker in other places. It's going to make it seem more like natural wood that's been painted or something anyway. So it doesn't have to look like a barn that's, um, you know, brand new. It'll look a little bit more old for that. So I think, you know, hopefully the put, putting the blue on there has made sense and has worked to help you get kind of a dark red. Um, if it didn't, then 
you know, put another, you know, give it a chance to dry and a little later, put some more red on there and it will come out dark, bright, brighter and brighter. But, but that's, you can either mix the paint on your palette and put it on there, or you can, you know, put two different colors and stir them all up on your picture, or you can put a layer down of one and put a different layer on top. It's kind of what happens with watercolors a lot is there's a lot of layering. So this would be a, definitely a technique that you would use if you were watercoloring too. Okay. I don't know if it makes sense for there to be a couple of red lines here to kind of make this into windows. Somebody who knows more about barns than me can decide, or you can do it any way you want to, but it'd be nice to have a pretty small one and then like a really small one, like, and if you don't have a really small one, you can use the back of the brush, like the wood tip end to paint with sometimes to do like tiny branches or whatever, or you could um, use a toothpick. Even if you break it and make it a little bristly at one end, you know, you can kind of scrape it in there. Um, but you know, it's not that big of a deal. If you have a big, bigger brush and bigger brush. All right, this is the first thing we're gonna do. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make there in this painting, this, I was gonna cut out the trees. Like, well, <laughs> you're too many trees. Then just don't make them all. I mean, obviously it doesn't have to doesn't happen, happen. Okay, but, um, we're gonna do a, like there's three littler ones, actually there's four littler ones. Actually, I might use my smaller brush. I got a little, little tiny one like this, okay? And what we wanna do is make these lighter, all right? So what you're gonna do is, you know where you have your gray from these trees, you're gonna take some black, all right? And put it over there, okay, in the gray. And you're gonna mix that a little bit, all right? you know right so i've got paint all over my brush i'm gonna wipe that off okay i don't want to try to paint like that with my little brush you do my little guy you put these trees really anywhere um they're kind of out in the backyard here so you can have some lines start with start with your little lines like that as many as you want you can have more you can have less the funny thing about whatever these trees are supposed to be is that most of the branches are going out sideways and most of the time branches grow up. I don't know what these are supposed to be, but we're going to do that with these because that's part of why it looks the way that it does. But with the trees in the back, the thing you need is like what I've got is a little bit of dry brush growing that it's not solid. So I'm going to put a little more water with my paint to make it a little thinner because I'm down here with a wood stove. All right, and then I want just a little bit and all I'm gonna do is bring branches that go up. And we're gonna put a tree right on top of all of this. So don't overthink it, okay? Because you won't hardly see it, but it will create, you know, I don't know, more of a grow feel. And just, if you put, um, if you put three branches on your sapling, it's enough. You can put 10 on there, I don't care, but three is enough. So don't feel like you have to make a whole bunch of branches to make this look like little tiny trees out here. Okay, but make sure that in the middle is kind of where they're the tallest. The only time they're like thicker on the sides is like if they've been struck by lightning and then the middle is blown out and then and they'll be like that. Um, this one is a little bit different, but you can just you can. All right, we're not really worrying about making them thicker or thinner or anything like that. Just a little skinny trees out there. I don't think I don't think there's any on this side, but if you want, you know, you could put something out there. You could even put some lines like this out in your far away forest if you wanted to. As long as they're nice and light gray. Okay. So we're going to use, we're going to make one here, we're going to make one here, and then there's, you know, it's a couple more, but it's most important that you have this one and this one. And if you put, if you don't put any more trees on, that's okay. If you start, if you're like somebody that's mo moving a little slower, 
you can always add more trees when we're done. Okay, but we're gonna put, I don't wanna spend a long time and we're also gonna put the fence in. What we're gonna do with these two is that we're gonna use the full strength black. And I have, you know, a pretty little one. I like a flat brush because you can paint the flat way, which is kind of thick and you can turn it sideways and you can paint a really skinny line. Two and one. And I'm lazy, so it's good. Okay, so first thing we have, and this is important, is that it goes off the top of your paper. A, a lot of times it takes a long time for people to believe that that's a good idea, but it really is. Don't get too close to the edge. You know, find a spot over here. If you don't have a lot of room for this tree, then just don't put it in there. But you want to have the branches show a little bit on both sides. So you're going to have something that starts up here. If it has a little, and you know, and goes down quite a ways. If it has a little lean to it, I mean, that's okay because trees do that, right? They don't all stand up perfectly straight. So don't let that hold you back. Um, after I put the line on there, I want to make sure that the top is a little skinnier than the bottom. I can't really make the top. Um, in this case, I don't want to bother to make it smaller. So all I'm going to do is just make sure this is a little thicker. So I'll just, you know, fill this, get a little more black on here and just make sure that as it gets to the base, it's getting thicker. Okay. This is like the worst black. So like I said, the branches on this tree are really horizontal. If you don't want to make them like that, don't make them like that. But I'm going to do that just because it must be a certain kind of tree that's like that. But I, um, and don't ever feel like you can't paint over something you already have. Because it only makes sense that the branch is going to cross over, in my case, the, the barn. All right. The thing is, is I'm thinking a little bit about where I want it to go. I don't want a branch that runs right along the bottom of my barn because visually that doesn't help to show depth. I don't necessarily want one that runs right across my windows because, you know, I want those to show. So I'm going to aim maybe a little bit in the upper part of the barn. So I'm going to have a branch that comes over here kind of like this. And they're more or less opposite each other. So you have one going there. And then if it's thin out here, then it just, you want it a little thicker where it meets the trunk. And I'm gonna put the big ones in first. I'm gonna put the big ones in this tree and I'm gonna put the big ones on that. And then I'm gonna take a little brush and put a few smaller ones on there. And that way, if you're running out of time or, or whatever, um, you can always do it later. So I've got another one that's kind of over here. Skip a little bit. These have a lot of like wiggle to them. Kind of spaced out. I don't know what it is. It's, this reminds me, I wonder what that tree is over where the burn pile is that is yeah. kind of like this. It has all those branches that are really nice, easy to climb on. All right, kind of like that. You know, well, the thing would be too, is that not every branch is going from side to side. That's, there are some that are coming forward and some that are coming backward. So the, easy, the easiest way to deal with that is just by making something a little smaller or also making sure that this black of the trunk is overlapping the ones that are in the back. But all right, let's see, I'll put another here. Maybe a little smaller as they get towards the top too. Let that go. I'm gonna to to bring that right over here more. All right. And maybe a little you know the stupid thing is is a paint like this on the back, see where it has a square? Mm. That means that it's um opaque and that's really your best buy for your money because it's really gonna be cover well and um, hold its own, except that this one is terrible. It should be really thick, but it's awful normally. And then, and then you, there's some of them that have the squares half clear and half black. Of course that's in the middle. And then there's the open that's translucent. And um, a 
lot of times the ones that are more translucent are also really shiny. It's like the alizarin crimson and the phthalo blue and the phthalo green. Those are all really see-through and really shiny, but they also are really great colors because they're super jewel toned and stuff. But anyway, all right. So I'm gonna put another tree in here. This one doesn't go quite off the page, but it, it's pretty low here. I do want, I'm not going to be, like I said, I'm not going to be scared to have it cross over my barn because it just creates space in your picture. Because if one thing's in front of another one, then that just tells your brain that, you know, there's depth. Where if everything is all spread out, it's probably one of the best lessons I ever learned was just to overlap stuff because it's just, so I'm going to maybe find, this is probably a good spot for me. I'm going to start here. Make my line almost to the top, then thicken it a little bit as I go down. All right. There we go. And this one has a little bit of kind of a Y shape. It has a, um, so it's kind of running parallel. I want to thicken that a little bit where they come together. You don't have to do it like this either. No. I'm going to do a few branches that are running side to side. They're not quite as big as the, the ones over here are pretty big. These are a little bit shorter. But the thing I want you to notice about this one, so if you're in the middle of something, take a peek, is the top of it has all these little branches that just go side to side, which is a lot of times what we do with like a fir tree, but I don't know why it's like that, but it's making, it's part of what's making this picture attractive in its way is because it has trees that look like this. So if you wanna copy that, keep that in mind. I'm gonna put a couple in with my bigger brush and then I'm gonna get a smaller one and fill in a few. And then, and then like I said, you can work on, work on it longer or later, but I wanna do the fence before everybody gets too tired. Um, so I'm going to plan a little bit where I want that branch to go. I don't want it, it to go right through my door because I won't see it. So I'm going to put it here. And then maybe here, go right off the page. Don't be afraid to have something go off the page, just like in a photograph. Everything always doesn't fit. One of the other ways to make a tree, I mean, I, that was the idea with the lighter gray or the, that we used for the tiny ones in the background is that if they're lighter, they're gonna look like they're farther away. So you could also do that with branches that were going off the back of the tree. I'm not, to, not necessarily right now, but if you wanted to make the tree seem like the branches went around it, you put some dark ones going to the sides, you put some really pale ones that go towards the back and it looks like they go off into the distance. That's like, how to make it a little more round. All right, let's see. That's okay with me. I'm gonna skip that other tree for now. All right, so I'm gonna grab my smaller one. Make sure your paint is, is thinned out when you're using a little brush because it's not gonna hold much paint. So you have to have a little water to make it so that it doesn't do all bright, dry brush, but you know, that could be your style. So that's all right too. And, and like I said, up here at the top, there's just these little pieces that are going side to side. A little of that in there. The more you, um, if you're trying to get tiny lines, the more you hold your brush perpendicular, meaning not like a tilt like this, mm -hmm. get a little paint right on the tip and hold it right perpendicular and then just kind of brush away and let go, you'll get those skinny lines. For some reason, when you hold it tilted, the brush will spread out and it doesn't do it as well. So that's a little hint to like get skinnier lines. It's not really my thing to do tiny branches, but make an effort.
if things are even, it just makes them seem a little older. Just little wisps, just kind of push, even if they don't touch the other branches, it just little tiny wisps of things that makes it look. Monica, are you using a little brush? She is. Okay. This is what we're going to do about this fence. I think it's the kind of fence where go zigzag, but I'm um, not gonna make it zigzag particularly. I don't think that's necessary because I've got a, I've got a better, the, the great thing about it is that you can kind of put this anywhere you want. It doesn't seem to really make a lot of sense. Sometimes we have them and they run right by a road. And so we really have to think about the perspective of it. But if this could be going, you can make, your, you can make it just randomly going right to the side. But I'm gonna kind of bring it maybe a little bit at an angle like this. This is what we're gonna do, okay? I got, a, I got a great hint for making it look like it's in perspective. Um, it does have to be relatively small, right? Because a person, you know, or a cow, if we're trying to keep something on the other side of this fence, I mean, you don't, you don't want it to be able to walk right over it. I mean, in a, maybe a person, the show you know a person is only going to be maybe half the size of this doorway so to have it go to their waist it has to be about a quarter of the size of the doorway you know if that doesn't make sense to you just just don't make it too small better a little bit on the big side than too small i don't think it's ornamental really right okay this is what we're gonna do we're gonna start let me how, how do i like to do this oh i start here okay i'm gonna start over here and i'm gonna make a line and I'm going to make another line. And I'm going to make another line and another one. And as I do these lines going closer to the barn, I'm going to make them just a little bit closer together if I can. Okay. Oops, I'm also going to make them about the same size. Okay. Right now, they look like they're all about the same size. Okay. If they're tippy, they need to fix them in the spring, right? Or, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be super sharp and, and, and tiny. I wouldn't even try to make them that small because it's kind of a nice added thing to all of this snow is to have this little black drawing with that shows some line work. That's like one of the things you add at the end of your painting, even if it's all super smooth or like a drawing that's all super smooth and shaded really gently is a little line, just something that gives it a little defin definition. So you don't have to feel like um, you can't do that with this. Okay. And we don't have to make shadows, so that's good. So this is what you're going to do. You've made the ones up here. Maybe I'll put one more. And you're not going to make these any smaller, but the ones here should be bigger. So all I'm going to have you do is add on to the ones that the, this one over here should be the biggest. Okay. So add on enough to this one so that you can make this one just a little bit, you know, close to the same size as that one. And then maybe this one is just a little bit so that at least by the time you get halfway along, the ones on the left half are bigger than the ones that are on the right half, okay? So you can't really make these any smaller, but you can just make the bigger ones bigger. You know, and if it makes, if you're very, you know, have a really dainty little line, just make these a little thicker too. That's what perspective does. The things that are the same size look smaller when they're farther away. Okay. Okay. I'm loving this right now. I'm already wet. So the, we just, and when you connect them, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight or whatever, because like I said, it could just be that they are, you know, breaking down a little bit. It doesn't have to be like that. Um, 
And you can decide whether you want to put two lines across. Um, if they come out thick, they're, they're just thick pieces of wood. If they come out really skinny, maybe it's a barbed wire fence. You know, whatever, whatever works for you. And two of them, three of them, I probably have room for three of them. Don't forget out here, I want to have them go off the page, right? And then this is going behind my tree. So not that, not that it would necessarily show, but you sometimes you want to make sure the brush strokes yeah. overlap and just put in whatever way it went, just connect them. And if these get a little thinner as you get out farther away, the, all the better. But if they don't, I'm sorry, too. Okay, well, this is pretty much, this is pretty much it for this, this picture. So mm -hmm. if you will be, um, you know, in the mood and you want to show me, send me a photograph of that. I would love that.